I have always been interested in the environment. Um, even as a young person, I was, I was always out in nature. So it's a natural progression for me. Um, my childhood interest turned into environmental interest, conservation, and climate change is, is part of that interest around the environment. Um, if you read the science, if you understand the science, it's clearly a, uh, an emergency situation that politicians, but the general public, everybody, needs to be thinking about and responding to. So the Hit for Six report looked at various aspects of climate change impacts on cricket and there were a lot of recommendations and advice given at the end. Um, I don't believe that cricket has really taken on board the advice that was given there, um, so there is far more that, that can be done. I think cricket is starting to respond. Um, ECB is doing some good work and uh, different grounds are starting to do things independently, but there's a lot more that we can be doing uh, for our general environmental impacts, but certainly around climate change. And the key thing that I always say when people ask for advice around sport in particular is start to have conversations. Um, if you're in a venue, if you are running any kind of sport event at any level, talk to the suppliers, talk to the spectators, talk to the players, talk to the participants. Start these conversations and you'll be surprised how many people actually want to have this conversation. So many of the values that you see in sport extend into activism and extend into the way that we need to respond to the climate crisis. Um, you know, even the language of sport, you know, you can be, uh, to use a, a football example, I guess, you know, 2 nil down with five minutes to go and you're, you should still be determined to, to win this match. We've now realised that what we've done in the past is causing problems now. So we've got to take that responsibility. So we've got to be creative, we've got to be courageous, we've got to push forward um, and we've got to find solutions to these issues. You should still try, you should still do your best. There's no point in just giving up and saying, because you, you know, you're gonna lose 6-0 instead of 2-0. Um, so you can't just throw your hands up and do nothing. These things. I would hope that with the benefit of hindsight, 200 years into the future, and thinking maybe a few years ahead, that we could say, we actually did come together. And we actually didn't make it worse from where we are now. Because we've already got some, some things that were already baked in to our, our current position. Um, but let's hope we just don't make it worse and we move forward from here and in a couple of hundred years time we've got an environment that is actually livable. Let's say middle age and beyond kind of say this is young people get it, young people are going to sort this out. That's, we can't do that. We can't put a burden on another generation. We've got to look at it now. My generation has to look at it now. Anybody alive at the moment has to look at it now. So I hope that in the future they will look back and say thank you for turning this around. Thank you for understanding the issues that we've got. And, and thank you for making a difference, um, changing the way we do politics, changing the way that we live our lives. And we've, we've turned back from something that could have been worse than what it turned out to be, um, and then now living in a, in a livable environment.